beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless
thou shalt be over my house and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled only in the throne shall i be greater than thou 41 and pharaoh said unto joseph see i have set thee over all the land of egypt and pharaoh took off his ring a symbol of authority and put it on joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of linen and put a gold chain about his neck 44 43 and he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had and he cried before him bow the knee and he made him ruler over all the land of egypt verse 44 and pharaoh said unto joseph i am pharaoh and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land of egypt look at that 45 says and pharaoh called joseph you know called him all the name and he gave unto him his wife asena and the daughter of potiphar priest of own and joseph went all over the land of egypt the last verse and joseph was how many years old how many years old joseph was 30 years old when he stood before pharaoh king of egypt and joseph went out of the presence of pharaoh and went throughout the entire land of egypt everybody say diligence say proficiency listen to me the world that we live in right now if you want the favor favor that's the reward system of the kingdom the favor of god many people have been taught that favor just means unmerited access i told you that you need to get my teachings the full gospel there i give you a balanced view of the dimension of god's grace and favor because i told you every christianity that makes god absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life without a partnership on your own part is an irresponsible christianity read from genesis to revelation every time god wanted to bless a man he demanded partnership on his own part is that true it's not all up to god and it's not all up to you your own part is to be diligent to gain mastery hallelujah i began to teach last week and i said that there are so many people in the body of christ they are poor they are average they are poor at their place of work they are poor and, 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 and in, in, in different endeavors that they do different ministers of the gospel they want crowd they want grace they want fame they want popularity but there is no diligence no diligence no mastery right a man of god comes to stand on stage and says don't worry don't mind what i'm saying just believe that the power of god will touch you let me tell you something when you see a congregation gather like this they are a mixed multitude not everybody is a daft are you getting what I'm saying? There are people who walk with God. There are people who are intellectuals. There are people who are committed to making an impact. I told you excellence is a language. Those who are excellent understand the language. It calls a certain kind of people to your sphere of influence. Is God speaking to us now? God wants to prosper us. But let me tell you, our part of the equation is that we must contend for mastery. We must contend for diligence. Joseph. So many people in Egypt. The question I always ask is. Didn't Pharaoh have a son? The Bible may not give us that record. But at least as a Pharaoh. He should be married. Is that true? For him to have neglected his son. And to make Joseph. a It wasn't just because he loved Joseph. It was because if he did not exalt Joseph to solve that problem, Egypt would die in famine. Listen, let me tell you. Diligence will make men overlook your age. Diligence and mastery will make men overlook your gender. They will overlook a lot of flaws in your life because you have something that cannot be rejected. It's God speaking to us. Can we find such a man that is exceptionally excellent? Can we find that exceptional banker? Can we find that exceptional lecturer? Can we find that exceptional student? Can we find that exceptional man of God? Gone are the days where people think ministry is for daft people. 
you submit your CV, there's no job. They drive you everywhere. And you just say, well, since they've rejected me everywhere, let me go to the vineyard. Ministry is not for idiots. Ministry is not for foolish people. This is the wrong mindset that has been given about ministry. Whenever they see people going into ministry, they think that they have failed and they don't know what to do in their lives. They didn't give them a job and they said, let's go into the vineyard. The Bible says he gave unto one five. He gave unto one two. He gave unto one one according to their several ability. He had tested them through time and found out that some were more proficient than others. You must hate and fight mediocrity out of your life, especially in this season of God's glory. Hallelujah. It's good to pray. It's good to fast. But you must be diligent. You must be excellent. You must do everything you do with uncanny mastery. The minimum standard in the world today is mastery. Exceptional diligence. While others are looking for jobs and crying, there are other people jobs are looking for. I know someone in this country, I was sharing with the school of ministry students last year. He does three jobs and works only three times a day. His minimum salary for one of them is 500000 Minimum. He does the job at his terms. The day he coughs, the whole company will go bankrupt. Everybody say mastery. Is God challenging us? When I came in, I was blessed when I heard our sister's testimony about the changes that was happening in our office. The Bible says you are the light. Say I am the light. You are the light does not just mean you are anointed. It means that you are exceptional enough. Listen, the key to kingdom advancement is gaining influence. I've told you this. The weapon of kingdom advancement is influence. Because influence is the ability, listen to me, influence is the ability to cause men to buy into your ideologies, to buy into your perspectives about life. When you are a man of influence, you sustain an ability that causes men to love your God, to love your principles. That's influence. The kingdom isn't just going to be advanced by sharing tracts. Right? And I told the Lord, I will never pastor a weak congregation. People who are broke, suffering, failures in life, but are just crying and say, Lord, we love you. Sooner or later, it will affect you. When there is no food in your house, you will not be able to fast. You see, the reason is because a number of people have others who are giving them money. Uncle or auntie. Remember we spoke last, last, um, last week, right? Dependency mentality. Take responsibility over your destiny and make up your mind to be diligent. A lot of people blame God and say, my, my boss is in the same koinonia with me and he can't lift me. He won't lift you because you are a member of koinonia. He will lift you because you are proficient and excellent. Praise the Lord. We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more. got to be more. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more. got to be more. There's got to be more than this. You have to preach to yourself. I'm tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more, got to be more. There's got to be more than this. You must be excellent. You must be excellent. Be exceptional. What you are trusting God to use to feed you. What you are trusting God, the value that you think you are adding to men, be exceptional. You claim God is calling you into the healing ministry. You are, you are average. The last time somebody got healed was five months ago. Right? No pressing. You, don't, you, are not, you are not following the principles. 
There are so many men of God. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. You give them the mic, they make blunders on stage. No Bible study, prayer life, zero, right? Their comprehension of the truth. They don't study books. They don't read. They sleep and snore like every other lazy person. You will never be given a ministry. No, sir. Ministry is the highest responsibility in this earth. A president can only rule for four years and, and drop or eight years maximum. A minister is an envoy called to prepare God's people. There are many business people. I want to be a businessman. You write it in your room. CEO. No mastery. No diligence. They talk. They cannot articulate their value. Let me tell you something. If we do not challenge ourselves, we will keep dancing around in church, but Babylon will feed us. And I told you, whoever feeds you is the one you bow to. No matter what you claim to do in church. Joseph. Same story with Daniel. He reigned through the dispensation of three kings and he was honored by them individually. Please refuse mediocrity. Challenge yourself. If God speaking to us, challenge yourself. First Kings 11. Let's quickly look at an interesting story again. First Kings chapter 11. Bible talks about an interesting man called Jeroboam. First Kings 11. Twenty-six to twenty-eight. You will have an encounter of a lifetime tonight. I tell you. Verse twenty-six. Are we there? It says, "And Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the Ephraimite of Zereda, Solomon's servant, whose mother, whose mother's name was Zeruah." A widow woman, even he lifted up his hands against the king. Now listen, there's no time to tell us the whole story. But the Bible tells us of the son of this widow called Jeroboam. And he said he was Solomon's servant. He was a servant. But watch what happened, verse 24. It says, and this was the cause that lifted up his hands against the king. Solomon built Milo's. And repaired the breaches in the city of David, his father. Verse 28. It says, and the man, Jeroboam, was a what? A mighty man of valor as a result. And Solomon, seeing the young man, that he was what? That he was what? He didn't say that he was anointed. He didn't say that he was a Jew. He didn't say that he was a male. He said he was a mighty man of valor. Do you know what it means for you to be called a mighty man of valor in ancient times? The Bible talks about the mighty man of David. One who fought single-handedly, threw down 800 people and a sword cleaved to his hands. The Bible talked about David of the tribe of Benjamin. The Bible tells us that the Benjamites, Bible history tells us that the, the Benjamites were so, were so fine in, in throwing slings, they could diverge an arrow with a sling. So it wasn't just that the anointing came upon David to kill Goliath. The anointing came upon something he had. Are you getting what I'm saying? Here the Bible says that Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon discerning that he was a mighty man of valor. What did he do? The Bible says in verse 28. Seeing the young man that he was industrious, advantageous, made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Jesus. Seeing that he was industrious. He said, no, 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 no. You can't be a, a servant just like the other people. You are so proficient beyond servanthood. And I lift you. You are the head of the house of Joseph. Diligence gives God room to bless you. Mastery shuts the mouth of critics. Mastery shuts the mouth of naysayers. You make the prophecy of your enemies a self-fulfilling prophecy when you waste your time arguing and defending yourself rather than sharpening your sword to gain mastery. Hallelujah. You must be proficient at your place of work, in ministry, in business. Pay the price. 
Don't run around looking for cheap success. Don't run around looking for quick money. Don't run around trying to claim what you are not. I've said it and I will keep saying it till it burns into you. Don't try to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. There are so many people who look successful. Like the fig tree that Jesus saw. But when he came, he found no fruit in it. I've made up my mind that in my lifetime, every area the Lord wants to use me, I will be like a sword that has been sharpened at its finest. Hallelujah. A man of God, God wants to bless you. But there is no grace, no revelation know the personal contributions you go for a meeting a major conference and waste the time of the people talking nonsense and at the end of it they say uh, thank you for coming here's your honorarium may the lord bless you and they will never invite you again never god open doors you close them by yourself let me tell you both in the church and in the secular environment the minimum standard is exceptional excellence minimum standard is God speaking to us? You're a hairstylist. Oh God, open the door for me. God is saying to wear. Make room for the blessing. Be proficient enough. Hallelujah. Please challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. There are many music ministers. You wrote a song... There is no standard to gauge the proficiency of the song. You to sing the song and hear what you wrote. Huh? And then, you see, the worst thing that can happen to you is to surround yourself with mediocres who are too ashamed to tell you the truth. You come on stage and sing and make a lot of blunders and when you step down, they say, Kai, Ken, ah, that song. And you say, really? You, you see how you are deceiving yourself? We, our standards are very small. So we, we feel a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment too fast. Because our standards are small. You're a man of God. You gauge yourself around with people who don't pray and are not serious. You lay hands on somebody and she falls down and you say emoji. Emoji compared to what? The day you go for a meeting, they bring a blind person. You pretend not to see the person. Praise the Lord. Oh, I have an apostolic. You go for a crusade, you see them. And you know the way, I love the way crusades are. They land the sick people. They are desperate. They say, man of God, there's somebody on the wheelchair here. Say, ah, did I ask you to bring the person out? Mastery. I love Jesus. Don't just think the Holy Ghost came upon him alone. The Bible says at age 12. Is that in your Bible? At age 12, Jesus sat down and began to articulate the writings of the prophets. The Pentateuch. This guy began to, he, he began to bombard the scribes and the Pharisees. What sort of boy is this? Don't waste the anointing. The anointing does not fall on nothing. The Bible makes us to understand in the building of the tabernacle, the glory of God never came until the tabernacle was built to specification. The last peg had to be put before they saw the glory of God. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Excellence. Excellence in dressing. Excellence in your singing. Excellence as a student. Excellence as a worker. Excellence as a whatever it is you're doing. When people are clapping for you, if you don't run away from that place, you will soon die. Because the people who are clapping are only clapping out their frustration. Right? In a class where there are 100 students, and you write an exam, for instance, if the best student gets 11 over 100, if you do a speech and prize, who will take the first prize? It will be said he took first. Correct? But what grade did he get? Help me. So he can move around saying I'm the best student compared to what standard. Then the day you step out and meet others who are not joking. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. 
a workman who needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Pay attention to diligence. Pay attention to diligence. Don't stop clapping for yourself when it's not time to clap for yourself. Hallelujah. Raise the bar. Thank God you are a local champion. In your community, you are the best. See the nations. If you don't make room for the nations, you will never be beyond the nations. That's why there are pastors that will never pastor more than 50 members. More than 100 members. More than 500 members. More than 1,000 members. Because the capacity, they have not made room for the blessing. Is God speaking to us, please? Don't just get angry and be frowning at your boss and say, this man is so wicked. This guy just got a job. In two months, he's promoted him. Proficiency. Proficiency. Closely tied to that, I spoke about laziness. Oh, by the way, Proverbs 22 verse 29 says, See thou a man diligent in his business. It gives you an assurance. It says you will not stand before mean men. Average people. Once you are diligent, it will defy every other barrier and make sure you meet with the kings of that sphere of influence. I've met with people that ordinary my level in life would never qualify me to see them. Not even by accident. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Laziness. Proverbs 10 verse 4. Many young people in Nigeria are lazy. Lazy. Mentally lazy. Spiritually lazy. Physically lazy. We're in a hurry to show quick success. We're in a hurry to show that things are working. Life is not like that. The Lord put this in my heart to talk to us about it and I will. Proverbs. Proverbs what? 10 verse 4. Who is there? Some of you are still at Exodus. Proverbs. Proverbs after Psalms. Proverbs 10 verse 4. It says, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent make it rich. He becometh poor. That dealeth with a slack hand. A lazy person. No inertia. He becometh poor. The word poor there is not just financially poor. You become bankrupt in every area. Romans chapter 12 verse 11. I found a very good scripture for ministers. Romans 12 verse 11. Let's hurry up so we can have time. Romans 12 verse 11. Shiva la kura sivra nyana balala. 12 verse 11. Are you there? Say amen. One to read. Not slothful in business. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. He said not slothful. The word slothful there means laggy. You are, not, you are not giving life the kind of aggression it takes. Right? He said not slothful in business. Diligent, fervent, zealous in spirit. Serving the Lord. So you want to serve the Lord? You want to serve his body? You must be competent. Please hate average. Let me tell you something. As you are sitting down here, the number one thing that should happen to you this night is tell yourself the truth i've tried but compared to where god wants to take me the journey is still far it will help you to humble yourself whether they write apostle jakes bishop jakes right it's an ugly scene to see an incompetent person boasting it's a very ugly scenario my goal is that we'll have the brightest of the brightest and the best of the best. The head of, the head of um, technical is here. I went to pray for his office. 
at the bio bio what biotech that biotech place and when i went in i looked at his office and i looked at everything i said wow it's not about size it's about content are you getting what i'm saying it's about content at least i know that there is a project that they are on now projects of of hundreds of millions competence when you become competent let me tell you brothers and sisters all of a sudden where you are coming from will never matter jeroboam the bible says his mother was a widow meaning she did not have the opportunity to do much but competence please there are many of us here it is your competence that will wipe the tears of your parents they didn't go to school they done their best don't sit down in the average and keep forcing your mother your father the poor people doing their best rise up and change your status don't just sing it as a song is god speaking to anyone here i read the story of joseph so that it will minister to us because many of us are young people joseph was 30 years 30 years and as a matter of fact out of that 30 years about 12 to 30 of that 30 years was spent as a slave what is your excuse you are a keyboardist you are the only one who claps for yourself when you play and you are angry and say oh lord open doors for me you see the, the problem is god does not want to disgrace his name are you getting me because you are an object of praise everything that leaves you reveals the glory of god it's called doxazo a display of his glory you must be competent competent i always do this mike play something play just play anything on the keyboard and um listen Did you know, did you know that what you just played is exactly what they are crying for in many churches? And they will find him and not even ask, what is it? Nobody will ask whatever and say, come, we are willing to pay you. Huh? And you are there pay, playing the things with your fingers and say, Lord, this church, I already see my destiny. No matter what you saw in your dream, I guarantee you, if you are not diligent, you won't enter into it. Praise the Lord. You are a doctor. The first person you gave an injection had problem. Second person had problem. Third problem. Before you blame demons, we're going to there will be deliverance here shortly. But I told you that the biggest problem of Africa is blaming demons. You can't take demons to court. You can't arrest them. We we like the fact that they are invisible entities. We excuse our failures. Everything demons. You woke up by nine, I know it's a spirit that, that stopped me. Ha, I planned for five. What happened? You are to go for a job interview by nine. By 8.30, you are strolling around carelessly. As if it's your place. As if you are the director. You are, the CEO that will interview you was there by seven. You stroll around, you came late and say, in the name of Jesus, lift up your head. Oh, ye gates. See that? The Bible says, having the readiness to judge all disobedience, when your obedience, when your own part of the equation is complete. Say, I refuse to be average. Say it, I refuse to be average. At least I'm better than him now. You see, that's the demonic attitude that keeps people as failures. They look around and say, eh, thank God, I'm not good, but at least I'm better than this sister. Even you, you know I'm better than you. God wants to lift his body and it does not take too long 
but the greatest publicity is to remain in the secret place sharpen yourself become exceptional the bible says and john remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance when john appeared with uncanny accuracy he knew that this was jesus he said behold the lamb behold the lamb he didn't mistake jesus for john the beloved he didn't mistake him because he asked all the questions in the secret place gideon defeated the midianites he stayed and asked the question and made sure he was ready look at david david looks at goliath and while others are chickening out david comes he ran to him that's what competence does it gives you confidence when others are running away you say where is the challenge They were going to hang all the magicians in the days of Daniel. The king said, by tomorrow, if you don't tell me my dream and the interpretation, just know you are dead. And Joseph said, um, I mean, Daniel said, allow me. And the Bible says in the night, the secret, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And when he got up, he said, oh king, this and that and that. And he was promoted instantly. Listen, brothers and sisters, contend for mastery. Contend for mastery. Those of us who are at work, contend for mastery. Don't be a liability to your place of work and expect promotion. It's not fair. Contend for mastery. And people will look for you. They will beg you. There are people who are paid millions of dollars to speak for one hour. Dr. Miles Munro, one of my greatest mentors, died last year. He wrote about 54 books and about 49 or so of them were bestsellers. It wasn't just because he was anointed. He consulted for government. $10,000 per hour. Even if it's just to look at your face. Competence. Hallelujah. I'm a builder. I'm a builder. You build a house as if the ground is falling. Why should they invite you again? Right? They send you to go and buy something. You buy something substandard. You don't even know what is the real thing. Refuse incompetence. You trust God to take you to the area of worship. Challenge. Is this not the issue of competition? This is the issue of standing out to give God room. So that you will shine like the stars. The Bible says do everything without complaining or arguing. So that you will be called blameless and pure. Children of the most high. And you will shine like the stars. As you hold forth the word of life. Be competent. Be competent. No room for laziness. Say amen. So you must gain mastery. Mastery attracts people across significant spheres of influence. Once you have mastery in an area, it will attract significant people in that area. I receive phone calls and text messages and I'm amazed at certain people who call me. They do not even know that they are the people that I have desired to see myself. And they call me. Hello, sir. How are you? Ah. I said, let me quickly humble myself. Fine, sir. I am so, 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 and so. Wow, it's my pleasure. Please, how can I see you? Whatever it is to take you, we can send a driver to come and pick you. This is urgent. Ah! Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Prophesy to yourself. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Let me tell you something. Success is not what compels attention. Consistent success is what compels attention. Sooner or later, your grace will be needed. The darkness in the world is too much for you to be ignored if you pay your price. Because not everybody is ready to be competent. So when you become exceptional, forget about the criticism for now. With time, people will swallow their words and look for you. I assure you, the same boss that said over my dead body will be alive and will be the one to shake you and say we are partners in progress. By the time his company knows dives, he will find you for sure. Is God speaking to anyone here? 
whatever your hand findeth to do. That's what my Bible says. It said, do it with all your might. Give it the best. Give it the best. I refuse mediocrity in my life. I refuse mediocrity. I will sharpen the sword of ministry. I will make sure I am exceptional to deliver word in season to God's people. The sick will be healed. The body will be guided. Whatever quota I have been anointed and have been graced, I will do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best. My very best. I'll do my best. So could it be that the reason why God has not announced you, listen, could it be that the reason why God has not announced you is because he does not want you to blow that opportunity. God is saying prepare. Prepare. Everybody say prepare. Say it, prepare. That's the word of the Lord for now. Prepare. Prepare. See the testimony of our brother Aaron. One side he's leaving a job, another job is coming. A federal government job. We're going to talk about the anointing. But brothers and sisters, let us not deceive ourselves. God will judge me if I don't tell you the truth. Are you getting what I'm saying? The anointing is only active when it comes upon a refined gift. When God anoints your grace, when God anoints your ability, you become a sign and a wonder. That takes me to the next thing I'll talk about very briefly. The anointing you are ready for the anointing among other things when you refine your gifts when you refine your abilities when you refine it then you are ready for the anointing sharpen yourself sharpen yourself and then you are ready for the anointing the fire never fell until there was a sacrifice upon the altar the fire does not just fall the anointing falls when you are prepared, when you are ready, then you become relevant. 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 I refuse to be relegated and I refuse you and forbid you from being relegated. Not just because you are a Christian, but because you do not have what to offer. Hallelujah. My younger brother, very brilliant gentleman. When he graduated, a job was not forthcoming. And I looked at him. I told him, young man, just keep sharpening your ability. You are too gifted to be ignored. It's a matter of time. Praise the Lord. For one year, that guy, very intelligent young man, but he committed his best. He gave his all. He was very, very serious. He was getting a job. That they were paying him 5,000. I told him, no problem. Stay there. Just be serious. He became exceptional. If he did not come for work, they would know. And all of a sudden, it was like a dream. He was called to become a lecturer in University of Joss. He's a lecturer right now. No devil stopped it. No devil stopped it. Everybody say competence. When they called him and he spoke to them, they knew this was a bright material. If you are called, if the kings that are to lift you call on you right now, will you enter the palace and go back to the prison? Or will you enter the palace and shut the door of the prison forever? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh God, connect me to that person. Connect me to that ministry. Give me an opportunity to preach in that bigger platform. And God is saying, are you prepared? As far as I'm concerned, I'm willing to bless you. But have you done your work? Are you prepared? I vowed a vow in my life. I will never enter the presence of greatness and go back to my old level. If I step into any atmosphere of greatness, I am prepared in season and out of season. Praise the Lord. When your preparation is complete, then you are ready for the anointing. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. The Bible says how God anointed that Jesus Christ after he spent time learning the, the, the Pentateuch and prepared himself, 
getting an exact blueprint of his assignment, the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And then, together, his diligence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he went about doing good, became invincible, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He said, I have found David, my servant, Psalm 89, verse 20, downwards. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. I had to find him. I found David since. But he had not done his work. Now I have found my servant. And with my holy oil I have anointed him. Hallelujah. A man in the construction of the tabernacle. The architect of that construction. He was called Bezalel. The Bible says he was a man who was gifted in craftsmanship. And the anointing of the spirit came. Look, let me tell you. When God anoints your grace. He will command men to hear you. And no, even if you are living in a cave. You become a city that is set on a hill. That cannot. Cannot. You spend your time praying and studying the word and opening up yourself and making yourself available, then that unction will come upon you. It comes in a heavy way that nobody will deny the hand of God upon your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a powerful thing to see someone who has done his assignment and is carrying the unction of the spirit. He becomes undeniable, invincible. No matter what you say about that person, the world is too dark for the, that grace to be ignored. I show you a key. God wants you great. God wants you blessed. For many of us in this miracle service, this is the key to the next dimension. I don't just want us to say it is it's raining, raining, let it rain and so on and so forth. No. Hallelujah. Grace. And I salute so many people who left various places to come tonight because it is part of your play your own part. And tonight grace will come upon you. And it will distinguish you. Like Saul, you will go back and they will say, Ah, is Saul also one of the prophets? When did you enter this dimension? Favor is when preparation meets opportunity. It's not magical. It's a formula. And God is calling us. Wipe the tears of your family. Forget about the challenges of now. That's why we are here. To address it. But above and beyond that, you must make up your mind, brothers and sisters, that something must be different about my life. Make up your mind that by next month's miracle service, I'm coming a new person. I'm coming a better person. Your phone that used to be on silent, by March, calls are coming every day. You wake up with calls and text messages. Men are, are placing demands on the grace, willing to pay any amount, job or no job. There are people who are not working, but they are getting the salary of CEOs because people will pay for your gift. Let me tell you, it says buy the truth. God put a price tag on the truth. And if you have the truth, men will buy the truth. They will pay you and they will call it a privilege. Is God speaking to someone here? And don't say, I didn't go to school or I didn't have the opportunity. I cannot speak English. No, no, no. None of those things. Master whatever God has given you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Master whatever he has given you. And tonight an anointing comes on it. And I send you like the foxes of Samson. And you will step in and begin to do wonders. The pride of every true leader is not that he becomes a superstar. I've said it again and again that true leadership, the hallmark of leadership is that you are able to influence followers to also become leaders, not maintain followers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shortly before we rise, I want you to pray as you are seated. You know the area in your life God has been wanting to bless you, but the truth is your incompetence has limited him. Inside and outside, no matter how far, lift your voice and talk to your maker and say, Lord, I'm sorry. This music ministry.
Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. Competence. Exceptional competence. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of being a mediocre. I'm tired of my life looking as if you are not mighty. I'm tired of joining the crowd in mediocrity. In this season of the rain, I'm challenging myself. Come on, pray, young and old. It's time for a new season. I arise and I shine for my light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Gentiles come to my light and their kings to the brightness of my rising. Never will I be termed forgotten, but I will be called Pula. Pula, the land of delight. I reject mediocrity in business, mediocrity in ministry. As a student, I reject mediocrity. I challenge laziness. Pray. As a worker, I am the best staff. I am an envoy. Pray. I break ordinary standards. I refuse mediocrity. Pray. As a minister of the gospel, I contend for grace. I stop joining the crowd in mediocrity. Go ahead and pray. As a businessman, I become exceptional. 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 I'm an ambassador. I represent the parliament of heaven. And I represent God at the highest level of excellence. Pray, Koinonia. As you cry upon him, he grants you grace. Lord, you want to change our stories in this season. We make room. We make room. We make room. We make room. We reject the spirit of laziness. Time and chance happen to them all. Opportunity and seasons come to them all. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray this prayer point. You're going to ask God for grace. Mention the areas where you need God to grant you grace to be competent. There are books you will need to buy. There are seminars you will need to attend. There are mentors you will need to find. Whatever it will take to be like an axe that has been sharpened. Go ahead and pray. I receive that grace. Grace for competence exceptional competence don't let any man preach you against competence incompetence will make you poor incompetence will make you angry incompetence will make you a failure incompetence will make you average I must stand out. I must stand out. In my generation, I must stand out. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Listen, I like you to pray. Pray for grace to be outstanding. Lift your voice. Grace to be outstanding. Forget about the pain of today. The Bible says for our light afflictions, which is what for a moment, walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Pray while we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change. The closed door is subject to change. 
when you are competent nations will celebrate you without bias they will celebrate you they will demand your grace they will pay for it the Lord. So I want you to have this at the back of your mind today. Go back and buy the books you need to buy. Go and sell those shoes and buy books. Are you getting it? He said, I, Daniel, understood by books. Stop living a fake life. Go and pack those materials. Sell them and buy what will give you relevance. The Bible speaks about the prophet Samuel. He said the word of the Lord did not fall in his mouth. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Don't applaud yourself when you don't have to. Be competent and the world will applaud you. And you will not be ashamed of it. You will not be ashamed to stand before the platforms he gives you. Because you know that you have, you have done your assignment. You will always be ashamed. You will always envy successful people. You will always hate them when you remain a mediocre. But when you rise, you become colleagues in progress. You become partners in progress. You celebrate them because you have become colleagues. Hallelujah. Now to the business of the night. I want us to pray. The Lord is going to do a quick walk in this place. There are mighty healings and deliverances. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, my time for a visitation has come. Pray from the depth of your heart, inside and outside. No matter how far you are, pray. insist that you must be touched this night insist that something must change it doesn't take time it just takes one encounter you came with a lot of challenges don't sit down waste your time make sure you cry unto God tell the Lord exactly what you want tonight go ahead please speak to the Lord especially for those standing outside make sure you talk to him I feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear we see the rain of your love we feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear so let it rain Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. hallelujah hallelujah listen 
I don't care what the issue is. Let your faith rise right now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I see sick people all around inside and outside and I see all kinds of people. But I want you to know tonight that the God of wonders is still in this place. So let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy life. your hands everyone hallelujah listen Tonight there is an unusual anointing upon me. I began to sense this right from home. There will be massive deliverance right now. Massive deliverance. There are people who have come. There are families that have come from far and near. Hallelujah. And every challenge, every power of darkness. My Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Participate. Listen. We are going to shout that name. Please don't you think it's just a chorus or it's a formula. There is an anointing with it. Because it's a name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. You are going to shout that name. At the count of three. As you shout that name. There will be all kinds of deliverances. Many of you, you are standing in not just for yourself. But for your family members, all kinds of spirits and spells attempting to bring back what Jesus died for. In the name of Jesus, I speak to the realm of the spirit and I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that every foul devil, every covenant, every spell at the count of three, let the fire of God separate those people right now. One, two, three. Shake the and those devils. I command those forces in the name of Jesus. I cast out those devils. Bring them out. Shake the temple. The fire is falling on witchcraft outside. The fire is falling. Every power that is not of God. I send the rod of judgment. Every power that is not of God, everyone standing upon this ground, I come with an apostolic anointing in the name of Jesus. Satan, let God's people go. There's no hiding place for the power of God is everywhere. There is no hiding place, not for witchcraft. There is no hiding place. I command judgment. Let the angels of the living God move across this congregation and break chains. Hallelujah. I see a lot of chains. Lift your hands again. I see chains. So many chains. Break. Chains. Chains break. Listen, some of you, these chains has lasted for years and decades, 
I don't care how long it has been. As you shout that name again, I see many people outside. You will know the chain has broken. That embargo over your family. You will know it when it happens. Because I hear sounds of chains. At the count of three, shout that name again with all your might. And I command that as they shout, may those chains break. One, two, three. Chains of stagnation. Chains. Hear me, listen. Listen. I guarantee you, not one person standing on this ground will go back with the chains holding you. I'm speaking to the powers. They know the voice of God. This is the season of the rain. This is the season of the rain. And in the name of Jesus, now over families, any family under the sound of my voice, you have suffered mysteriously. I come in the name of the Lord whose I am and I command judgment upon the powers of darkness. Judgment upon the powers of darkness. Right families. Release the destiny of families. The destiny of families. We invoke the blood. Was the son of God made manifest that he may destroy, put to an end, annihilate? It says, Son of man, what seest thou? Zechariah 1 18. It says, Four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Israel, and against Jerusalem, so that no man will lift up his head. He said, But I have sent four carpenters, and they will terrorize those horns. We have come tonight to terrorize the power of darkness. They must let you go. After nine plagues, Pharaoh refused to let them go. He said, yet will I send one more plague upon Pharaoh and Egypt. And after that, he will let you go. Jesus paid the price in full, completely. There is no reason why the devil should tie you down. When he was on the cross, he said it is finished. And we are here to enforce that which, that fatigue. In the name of Jesus, for those in front here, they represent families. I don't care what kinds of spirits or entities. At the count of three, you will let God's people go and release their families. No matter how long the blood of Jesus annihilates the legal hold you have. I don't care what covenant you have in the name of Jesus therefore I speak to every foul spirit that at the count of three you let them go never to return 
right now in the name of Jesus. One, two, three, go, 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 go. Out you go. Out you go. Out you go. Never to return. Out you go. By the ministry of the blood. By the ministry of the blood, I cost you. By the ministry of the blood, release the families, release their finances, release their destinies. Go now, go now. I compel you by the blood of Jesus. That blood opens the gates of captivity. That blood opens that gate. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare every family under bondage free. I don't care how long the doors have been closed. We open it now. You will begin to experience unlimited breakthrough. Hallelujah. Who is Stephanie? Stephanie. I hear a name Stephanie. You are wearing a like orange veil. Do we have somebody like that? Is it an orange veil or something? Stephanie. Yeah. Bring that woman. That lady or that woman, whoever. Just let them win. Okay, young lady. This is the spirit of death. Bring her. Lay hands on her stomach. I curse that spirit. Every spirit of infirmity. Out! Now! Leave her alone. She will rise up completely healed. Stephanie, Stephanie, I see here the name. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a family in a vision. We have to hurry up. We really want to finish first. So I'm seeing a family. There is a family that came here. I'm seeing four people. Like, is it four children or something? A family. Do we have someone like that? Please, if, if it's yours, if it's your case or it looks like your own, just signify. And let's know if there is none, we can move forward. Because this is what the Lord is showing me. I'm seeing a family. It's like four children. They are here. They came here. Shut up. Is it you? You are the one. Where are the people? Where are your children? Come. Why are you sitting back? Come. Do you know that there is a call of God upon the family? Not just your mother, but upon the family. And it's a prophetic call. It's a prophetic call. Right? It's not only your mother. I didn't, I'm, I'm, I don't know you people. But the hand of God is going to come upon you. It's a mighty anointing of the spirit. It will come upon you. Are you part of the family? Huh? You are related. You are what? You are on your own. Okay, please, until I call you, but come, come and stand since you have come. For the Lord is going to bring restoration. This is the first thing that will happen. Mark it. Restoration. Number two. What do you do? the Lord is going to lift you why am I seeing a ring in your hand I'm not seeing a physical ring but it's in the spirit I'm seeing a ring your wedding bells are ringing are you married huh this is what I'm <laughs> we don't feel embarrassed we are a family marriage is not a bad thing Abi mommy is it a bad thing it's not a bad thing because there is nobody and you are wondering, this is what you are thinking in your heart. Where is the person? 
Listen. He said, we see the fire. We see the fire. We see the wood. Where is the lamb? And he said, Jehovah Jireh. The same word that comes. Listen. Listen, my dear. You don't know me. I'm not a herbalist. Are you getting my point? When the Lord brings a word, it will make it happen. My brother, this year you will hold finances that will make you afraid. Come, what do you do? What does, what, what do you do? Huh? That's not it at all. It, this one is just for generosity, just to prepare you. God is going to open a strange opportunity for you. Do you believe what I'm saying? It's a strange opportunity. If you people have ever doubted whether the hand of God is upon your mother, I'm telling you, she's not fake. I'm saying it now. Because they have been talking about this woman. She sees. And people have been saying she's fake. I'm saying, if this woman is fake, she will not enter this place. I guarantee you. Except I'm not a man of God. Please, she's not fake. What she needs is, is the, an, an accurate alignment through the word of God. So that her prophetic vistas will be sharpened. She has a lot of prophetic insight. But the word level is very low. So there is dwindling. That stability in the spirit is not there. That's all. This mama is not fake. Because I'm seeing her walking in a prophetic and a healing anointing. Very powerfully. Come, madam, come. Let's pray to the king. You have taken all the glory. You have taken. Hold hands, both of you. I show you a mystery. Madila Katabarata. Jembra Mato Zatali Kaparando Skolapaya. Mambro no supaya. One will chase a thousand, but two will chase ten thousand. Confirm your word right now, oh God, as I speak. There is a transference of graces right now happening between both of you. It's a drinking together, it's a happy anointing that is coming because you will also step into a strong evangelical and prophetic anointing drink of that wine right now in the name of Jesus Christ don't be afraid to help her you won't be with her forever but the Lord is going to lift you in due season and you will begin to see in a strange way may the Lord bless you may he anoint you in the name of Jesus Christ I break the embargo of darkness over the family come you are a great lady, but the devil wants to oppress your life. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. Mm, for he is here. Light shines in the darkness. You must release her. Let her go now. I'm seeing an old woman's face. But in the name of Jesus, I declare, you step into strange dimensions of grace. I command deliverance to you right now. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. It's all right. I bless this family. The Lord changes your story. You will return with dramatic testimonies in Jesus' name. Newi. I'm hearing a name of a place. There is there's Newi. I know it's an Igbo place, right? There is there is a there is somebody I think a lady or a guy or somebody from that place. Newi. Who is that? Please, if it's your case, whether you are outside, just make your way so that you don't waste our time. Please, there are so many other people. Come, mama. She's your mother. What's wrong with her? Is this working? Please help us. She's having a problem with her legs. She's having problem with her legs. knee problems. Her legs. Oh. Her legs. Her Arthritis. You don't know. Yeah. You love God. Asleep. Very well. Very well. Yeah? Very well. Well enough to marry a man of God? Yes. Because that's your husband. He's a man of God. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know how, madam. <laughs> See mommy laughing. <laughs> mommy, come. What is wrong with her leg, please? Let's, let's not... Well, it has been disturbing her for some time now. How long? Like? Up to two years now. I feel a swoon in my waist by my left leg, fish ground. I used to feel serious pain. Don't, don't, don't cry, it's okay. Mama, look at me. You came here because you believe in Jesus. Yes. 
Look at me. Just look at me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. I receive healing. I receive healing. Pain. Pain. Go. Go. Now. Now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama, you believe Jesus. I believe Jesus. Run up here. Come. Just come. Forget about the legs. Come. Go ahead. Do what you couldn't do. Look. Praise the Lord. For this program today, I'm no more feeling the pain. I even I went Check. to hospital today. My Come on, give Jesus. God. Praise God. I pray to break every chain. Break every chain. Let's go. Where are you from? Cross River. Huh? Cross River. You are serious about your love for God, right? Yes, because you are going to marry a man of God. Yes, I am. You, are, you know it now. Yes. What I'm saying, you have known it. I'm just confirming to you. Thank you, Jesus. Is it a lie? <laughs> they just say I'm lying. Thank you, Jesus. Ladies know a lot of things. They just hide it. I'm not endorsing your dream and your vision. No, I don't know what you saw. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Not only that, truly, truly, the grace and the spirit upon your mother is upon you because your mother is a good woman. Mama, tell me one thing you want God to do in your family. I want my children to serve God. I want all of them to serve God. Father, stretch your hands towards this family, everybody. What a request, not for money. Many of you will ask for money. I will give me money, sharp, sharp. In the name of Jesus, you are the son. Where are the rest? You are the only one. Just two of you. Yes, and I have since graduate. I thank God for what God has been doing in my life. I thank God. Praise the Lord. Stretch your hands and pray for this family. Eleven children. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. I bless this family. Let doors of prosperity be open. Let doors of advancement be open. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Celebrate Jesus for Mama's miracle. Rejoice with them and you will have your own testimony. Hallelujah. Who brought this person? Help us now. Where are the people? Huh? I'm the one. It's okay, Mama. Relax. What is the situation? What is it? He can't walk. What happened to him? It's okay. What happened to him? Look at me. How are you? Can you talk? Let me talk. What happened to you? I fell sick last year October when they took me to the hospital. So many examinations. And they say it's cancer. And when they refer me to Shika here. They said you have cancer. Yes. Sir. So right now you have cancer. Yes, sir. So they've left you to die. Yes, sir. Cut off of your legs. Yes, sir. I cannot even walk, sir. You can eh? I can't walk, sir. Since when? Since when did he stop walking? Last month. You believe that the power of God is going to set you free? Yes, sir. My brother, look at me. Jesus is able to heal you. You believe that? You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. There is a spirit. I curse that spirit right now. I curse that spirit. Right now, you feel fire going through your body. I curse that spirit upon these legs. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release the power of God. I command that spirit. Leave him right now. Move your legs. Start moving your legs. Try to move it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you feeling the legs? Do you feel the legs? Now I release strength to these legs. Right now. I release strength to these legs in the name of Jesus. 
I release strength to these legs right now. Exercise the legs and let him start moving it. Go ahead. The cry in your family comes to an end by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord visits you and brings to an end. He brings to an end in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please call this mama, this madam. Come, he will answer you. Come. Massage his leg. I will tell you when to pick him up. He's visiting you in a strange way. Bringing breakthroughs to you. Refining the fire. And causing the hand of wickedness over your family. That embargo is lifted over your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come ma. Don't worry. God is touching everybody. Just connect to what he's doing. Mommy. Look at me. Please don't cry. Look at me. Just look at me. I want you to know that the captivity in your family has come to an end. I know you are crying. Don't worry about it. Believe me. Look at me. Where is your husband? He's not here. No, come. Is that all there is to the story? So when I left house, he never come back from work. I need to pray because your marriage is shaking. You need the grace of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Mama, don't cry. God is bringing you restoration. That's what I hear in my spirit. And I command and I prophesy restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. I cause that force of darkness right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm looking at an angel walking through this room. This is what I'm looking at an angel. The Lord wants me to talk to somebody. That person will come under the power of God right now. When that happens, please let me have that person. You have taken all the voices. You have taken all lamentations. You have taken all the praise. You have made let me yours. Please bring out. I give him, I give him, I give him the highest praise. A fire that ignites you and sets you free. I command in the name of Jesus that influence of darkness leaves you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, please. All those who came here specifically for healing miracles, find your way to the front right now. Worship team, give us a powerful session of worship as we pray. Please, don't make it rowdy, inside and outside. Aside from the, the family that I minister to, if you came with a sick person, please come and line up here quickly. Let's save time. Expect the power of God to touch you. Please. You see what the Lord is doing. And all of us who are standing, if there is a loved one or somebody you know, as you are standing, connect to them. Please, don't lose connection with this service. Some of you can take steps of faith. God is already touching people. Don't lose connection. No matter how many we are here to minister to you. It will be a quick walk. Pastor Jackson, it's going to be a very quick walk because of time. There are still some other things God wants to do. Especially the prophetic aspect of this meeting. There is a guy outside. The power of God is going to hit him in a mighty way. God is bringing restoration in his life. A gentleman, it will be like a tornado. It will be a mighty encounter. Now listen. All of you standing. I want you to know that Jesus heals. The price for your complete.
great healing has been paid. I know that there are HIV people standing here. There are people with all kinds of medical reports. I guarantee you the price has been paid. And so as we pray, everyone I'd like you to connect because some of you shortly, you will be receiving strong impartations of the healing anointing. So you must focus. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Hallelujah. Elijah said, if you can see me, don't, don't be distracted, please. Hallelujah. Please pass your request, ushers. Let's hurry up, please. Get them to the aisle. Just pass it to the last person. The last person by the side, please. Help the ushers inside and outside. It's not a ritual. There is a strange mystery of answered prayers in this place. Please. Begin to pray in tongues as you do that, please. Everywhere. Begin to pray in tongues. All those connecting with us online, it's time for them to connect now so that we can... Hallelujah. We're not trying to build doctrines out of no no I'm I'm one person that fights tradition, especially where the Spirit of God is not there. But this was an instruction God gave according to what Hezekiah did. Hezekiah carried the threat letter and brought it to the altar and laid it there before God. Hallelujah. Please, very quickly, inside and outside. If others sent it to you by text and you've not copied it out, just you can just keep it and connect by faith. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord Jesus, we come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the requests of your people. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything. It says, with prayer and supplication, prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. Make it known. Don't hide it. Make it known. Begin to talk to the Lord about what is on the altar here right now. Please pray. Hearing is our Father glorified when you bear much fruit. Some of you, the request you wrote here, only God can grant it. That's why we don't read it. We just pray. Because probably if some of us see what you've written here, our faith level may not be able to take it. Please make sure everybody's request gets here. No matter how long. Let's do it very quickly. I have seen... God do strange things strange things in the lives of people we have seen all kinds of dramatic miracles please I want you to know the person you are praying to I want you to know that it's not to Joshua Selman it's not to an idol you are not praying to the president of this nation the king of kings is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am. I am Hallelujah. Myself and Pastor Jakes will be praying passionately on this request. I want you to believe that as we make contact with your request, I tell you the angels. There are some of you as we are praying on it instantly, you will begin to get answers. In one minute, everybody begin to blast in tongues as we pray. Hey. Father, hear the prayers of your people in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let there be all kinds 
all kinds of miracles. I agree with my brother, all kinds of miracles. Supernatural jobs, supernatural liftings. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unto you that answer prayer will all flesh come. Blessed Lord, that every cry, every need, Lord, every pain, Lord, let things that look impossible by men, we pray for a change in the name of Jesus. We ask for the hand of God to come mighty, Lord, upon families. Let there be testimonies, Lord, unfolding testimonies. We pray for the hand of God, Lord, to open doors that have been closed. Hitherto, we ask for your mighty miracles, breakthroughs, Lord, the blessings of God that make it rich and added no sorrow. Father, we pray for jobs, amazing, blessed jobs, Lord, miracles, miracles, Lord, healings of families, Lord. We pray that, Lord, contracts that have been overdue, Lord, we pray for sudden calls, calls, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, the tears of your people, Lord, the needs of your people. In the name of Jesus, we command that angels responsible for bringing answers to these prayers be released right now in the name of Jesus. Let the heavens be open over your people in the blessed name of Jesus. My Father, as we lay these prayer points before you, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus. We ask that doors be opened. Let greatness arise in your people in the blessed name of Jesus. Thank you because God, as we ask in the name of Jesus, we know you answer in the blessed name of Jesus we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please rise up, everybody. There is a heavy anointing in this place. Just a few minutes and we'll be done. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of prophecy. I may not be able to call everybody one by one, but the word of God, Kabbalah Taya, he said is the discerner of the thoughts and the intent. No matter where you are, one word of prophecy can tear open whatever limitation. Please, I want you to believe. Everything you see us do in this miracle service is as instructed. There is no room for entertainment. We fear God and will not gather you to waste your time. Hallelujah. The Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Lift your hands. As your level changes, lift your hands. Something will happen to you. Please, I want you to receive as I pray. Shout amen from the depth of your heart. Amen means let it be so. It's an act of faith. Hallelujah. I bring to an end the era of mourning in your life and your family. I say it again. The era of mourning by prophecy. Let mourning end in your life and in your family. Hallelujah. Hear me. Every embargo that has stood on the way to your next level. By the weapon of the prophetic. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I command those limitations broken. Human limitations. 
demonic limitations I command them broken now I command them broken now hallelujah hallelujah I declare every dimension you should have entered by now that you have not entered by the mystery of restoration in the name of Jesus between now and the next miracle service step into those dimensions I prophesy to you step into those dimensions I prophesy to you step into those dimensions step into those dimensions hallelujah I pray for every student here listen this proverb will no longer be used in your life listen that proverb that makes God lose if he's not alive in your academics in the name that is above all names we send angels to every department of every campus represented here we send angels to every faculty may they tear down may they uproot every trace of wickedness may they tear down may they uproot in the name of Jesus let missing scripts be found let students that have been victimized be restored in the name of Jesus hallelujah for God has not given us the spirit of fear there are many people you want to take steps but fear is keeping you down in the name of Jesus the Bible says and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage I cause fear from your life now I cause fear from your life now I cause fear I cause fear in the name of Jesus hallelujah I pray for you there are many who have been praying Lord reveal to me the purpose of my existence there are people who have been crying I don't want to waste my time in destiny I pray for you that through a night vision mysterious prophetic encounters may your exact assignment be revealed in the name of Jesus Christ there are people praying right now all you are you have come here for is the direction for the next level you just came to get direction I prophesy to you the Bible says and ye shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way I command between now and next week let there be accurate direction accurate direction in the name of Jesus I pray for you there are people here whenever they want to favor you people change their minds for reasons you do not understand I pray in the name of Jesus that every planting that is not of God that is making your helpers reject you in the name of the Lord Jesus I command them broken now I command them broken now hallelujah by the power of prophecy I connect you to the men that need to help you and lift you to your next dimension please take seriously what I'm saying in the name of Jesus I connect you I connect you business helpers ministry helpers academic helpers marital helpers receive the ministry in the name of Jesus prophecy is like rain your job is to receive it once you receive it it starts acting immediately in your life hallelujah I pray in the name of Jesus Christ 
over your health. That spirit that keeps bringing recurrent health conditions. The price has been paid. And therefore by the blood, I break you free from any covenant of infirmity. I break you free from I command everyone under any spirit of infirmity that is recurrent may you be free once and forever hallelujah I challenge embargo of hardship over people and families there are families that love God but it's like hardship will never leave them in the name of Jesus we stand tonight in this place and we challenge the root of hardship by next miracle service return with breakthrough testimonies return with breakthrough testimonies you may not know how it will happen but may my God go before you and shock you hallelujah I pray for your finances in the name of Jesus there are many who are giving you are tithing you are faithful but it just looks like when things are about to happen there are limitations in the name of the Lord Jesus I declare that beginning from next month I invoke the mystery of divine supply the same way hear me the same way a raven the Bible does not tell us where it came from but it brought bread for the prophet I command mysteriously may your gates be open now to receive the forces of the Gentiles I pray for everyone called dull in this place you understand but something happens to your mind that 10 times better anointing that distinguishes people receive it in the name of Jesus I sense an anointing one more time I pray that prayer whatever stops you from understanding the Bible says and he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures I pray for you may understanding be granted unto you hallelujah favor the one factor that separates men that favor in a heavy dimension may it mantle you from now may favor mantle you from now in the name of Jesus financial favor marital favor academic favor favor in your job favor in ministry hallelujah everyone who is confused about life any aspect of life I bring that confusion to an end now I pray for all those who came here specifically trusting God for the fruit of the womb Mazuka parata teleka. In fact, I pray for you. Listen, not just physical barrenness, any area of your life. This is the year of the rain. And when rain falls, barrenness stops. Therefore, I command be fruitful in the name of Jesus. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. In the name of Jesus. I command everything called dead in your life. And your family. I don't care for how long it has died. Your health, your business, your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I command resurrection right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. There are people who desire God. 
you desire an encounter that's what you need you desire an encounter i pray for you may the angel of the lord's presence visit you you may not understand what i'm saying may the angel of the lord's presence visit you in the name of jesus christ i pray for your gift your ability your skill whatever you are using that brings bread help her please i pray for you the works of your hands because you are determined to be diligent you will see the testimonies that will come from this prayer i put an anointing on your skill i put an anointing i put an anointing on your ability i put an anointing on your gift on your work on your skill may it begin to produce in a supernatural dimension hallelujah now lift your hands i just want to do an impartation there are people who have come from different places please be sensitive we are out of time we will soon round up but it's time to receive something listen listen i told you there will be many impartations hear me the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference are you hearing what i'm saying no matter what you are doing when the grace is not there you will struggle forever please hear me especially in ministry if you are a minister of the gospel in this place help her please it's time for you to catch this thing for real it's yours for the taking listen I want to pray as I stretch my hands and pray inside and outside wherever you are you must not be in ministry like fivefold whatever area many of you will begin to have dreams encounters listen many of you will step into healing graces there's no time to move one by one but i'm going it's one of the major assignment god gave me tonight please believe it you will argue it at your own detriment there is a cheap route the help of god is here to lift you the help of god is here to take you lift your hands everybody father i pray that in the next two minutes let there be from the front to the back outside let there be strange impartations at the count of three one two three let the wind blow right now receive it prophetic graces apostolic graces shake it take it take it a protosia dreams visions encounters dreams visions encounters the word of knowledge gifts of the spirit let there be distributions right now right now right now the gift of wisdom the word of knowledge the working of miracles the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues the gift of prophecy gifts of healing healing mantles receive it receive it leadership anointings leadership anointings leadership anointings i impart it leadership anointings utterance 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 i release it to you utterance in the name of jesus to communicate the things of the spirit utterance receive it utterance i i release upon you insight into scriptures insight into the mysteries of the kingdom i grant you access by grace to the mysteries of the spirit the mysteries of dominion the mysteries of prosperity the mysteries of impact hallelujah
the final prayer I want to pray for you is honor. Many of you don't know what honor is. Honor is not the same thing as blessings. You can be blessed but not honorable. It says, and Jabez was more honorable. Honor. That fragrance that compels loyalty. That fragrance. Zamatic alive. Lord, everyone under the sound of my voice, inside and outside, may this grace that, that will bring honor to a man beyond your age, beyond your level, receive it now in the name of Jesus. I release it from the depths of my heart. Receive it in the name of Jesus. From today, everywhere you go, may honor follow you. And I declare these hands that are lifted like Aaron, like Joshua, lifted up the hands of his servant Moses, I command, may those hands never go down. May the Lord cut off from your life everything that will bring your hands down. And I pray for marriages supernaturally. May God connect people supernaturally in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As it is happening to you, let it happen to every one of your family members, no matter where they are. I prophesy as it is happening to you, let it happen to every one of your family members. Hallelujah. Now very quickly, you are here. You've never given your heart to the Lord. Please hear me. Please keep standing, everybody. No moving around. Let's honor them. Just in one minute. You're here inside and outside. You have never made a decision for Jesus Christ. Or at one time, you have made a decision for Jesus. But you found yourself dwindling. You have seen the hand of God. And Jesus is calling you back home. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Don't let any man cajole you. Win the war in your heart today. For the sake of your destiny. Wherever you are, Please start running from your seat inside and outside and come out here. I want to lead you personally to Christ and pray for you. Go ahead. Are there people like that? Go ahead. Don't look at any neighbor. Don't look at anyone. Wherever you are, inside or outside. Don't pretend it. Jesus is calling you very quickly. Very quickly. Where are those who are giving their lives to Jesus? Inside or outside? Make your way to the front. Don't be ashamed. Please appreciate them coming on as they come. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. No matter how far, rush and make your way. Young and old. God bless you. Keep coming. It's time to make it right. Don't play games with destiny. Jesus is calling you. Come and surrender everything. Totally and consciously. Totally and consciously. Please make way for them. Don't stop them. Make way for them. Come to Jesus. Hallelujah. I salute and congratulate every one of you for coming out. Hallelujah. The prayer you are praying is not reciting a poem. I want you to pray from the depths of your heart. Lift your right hand and say after me passionately and truly say Lord Jesus I love you and I believe in you I believe you died for me you rose again for me I surrender completely to you take charge of my life from today and forever I denounce sin I denounce Satan and I receive eternal life into my spirit Keep your hands lifted. Father, receive these ones. Change them. Transform their lives radically. I cause the power of sin from your life and I release grace upon you to experience that which Christ has done for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, everything that keeps drawing you to sin, I cause it right now. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for this great decision. Please follow the ushers, the gentlemen with the jerseys. They will have your details and you'll be back to your seat. God bless you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. 
I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget,